What is a recipe in chef? In any organization, recipe is the most fundamental configuration element. It is written in Ruby language. It is a collection of resources defined by using patterns. A recipe is stored in a cookbook and it may have dependency on another recipe. We can tag recipe to create some kind of grouping. We have to add a recipe and run list before using it by chef client. It always maintains the execution order specified in run list. What are the main benefits of Ansible? Ansible is a powerful tool for IT automation for large-scale and complex deployments. It increases the productivity of team. Some of the main benefits of Ansible are as follows. Productivity, it helps in delivering and deploying with speed. It increases productivity in an organization. Automation, Ansible provides very good options for automation. With automation, people can focus on delivering smart solutions. Large scale, Ansible can be used in small as well as very large scale organizations. Simple DevOps, with Ansible, we can write automation in a human readable language. This simplifies the task of DevOps. What is Chaos Monkey in DevOps? Chaos Monkey is a concept made popular by Netflix. In Chaos Monkey, we intentionally try to shut down the services or create failures. By failing one or more services, we test the reliability and recovery mechanism of the production architecture. It checks whether our applications and deployment have survival strategy built into it or not. How do you perform test automation and DevOps? We use Jenkins to create automated flows to run automation tests. The first part of test automation is to develop test strategy and test cases. Once automation test cases are ready for an application, we have to plug these into each build run. In each build we run unit tests, integration tests and functional tests. With a Jenkins job, we can automate all these tasks. Once all the automated tests pass, we consider the build as green. This helps in deployment and release processes to build confidence on the application software. What is Puppet? Puppet Enterprise is a DevOps software platform that is used for automation of infrastructure operations. It runs on Unix as well as on Windows. We can define system configuration by using Puppet's language or Ruby DSL. The system configuration described in Puppet's language can be distributed to a target system by using REST API calls. What is the use of Kubernetes? We use Kubernetes for automation of large-scale deployment of containerized applications. It is an open-source system based on concepts similar to Google's deployment process of millions of containers. It can be used on cloud, on-premise data center and hybrid infrastructure. In Kubernetes we can create a cluster of servers that are connected to work as a single unit. We can deploy a containerized application to all the servers in a cluster without specifying the machine name. We have to package applications in such a way that they do not depend on a specific host. What is the architecture of Kubernetes? The architecture of Kubernetes consists of following components. Master, there is a master node that is responsible for managing the cluster. Master performs following functions in a cluster. Scheduling applications. Maintaining desired state of application. Scaling applications. Applying updates to applications. Nodes. A node in Kubernetes is responsible for running an application. The node can be a virtual machine or a computer in the cluster. There is software called Kubelet on each node. This software is used for managing the node and communicating with the master node in cluster. There is a Kubernetes API that is used by nodes to communicate with the master. When we deploy an application on Kubernetes, we request master to start application containers on nodes. What are the three ways of DevOps? The first way, systems thinking. In this principle we see the DevOps as a flow of work from left to right. This is the time taken from code check into the feature being released to end customer. In DevOps culture we try to identify the bottlenecks in this. The second way, feedback loops, whenever there is an issue in production it is a feedback about the whole development and deployment process. We try to make the feedback loop more efficient so that teams can get the feedback much faster.
it is a way of catching defect much earlier in process than it being reported by customer. The third way, continuous learning, we make use of first and second way principles to keep on making improvements in the overall process. This is the third principle in which over the time we make the process and our operations highly efficient, automated and error-free by continuously improving them. What are the main services of AWS that you have used? We use following main services of AWS in our environment. EC2, this is the Elastic Compute Cloud by Amazon. It is used to for providing computing capability to a system. We can use it in places of our standalone servers. We can deploy different kinds of applications on EC2. S3, we use S3 in Amazon for our storage needs. DynamoDB, we use DynamoDB in AWS for storing data in NoSQL database form. Amazon CloudWatch, we use CloudWatch to monitor our application in cloud. Amazon SNS, we use simple notification service to inform users about any issues in production environment. YGit is considered better than CVS for version control system. Git is a distributed system. In Git, any person can create its own branch and start checking in the code. Once the code is tested, it is merged into main Git repo. In between, dev, QA and product can validate the implementation of that code. In CVS, there is a centralized system that maintains all the commits and changes. Git is open source software and there are plenty of extensions in Git for use by our teams. What is the difference between a container and a virtual machine? We need to select an operating system, OS, to get a specific virtual machine, VM. VM provides full OS to an application for running in a virtualized environment. A container uses APIs of an operating system, OS, to provide runtime environment to an application. A container is very lightweight in comparison with a VM. VM provides higher level of security compared to a container. A container just provides the APIs that are required by the application. What is a REST service? REST is also known as representational state transfer. A REST service is a simple software functionality that is available over HTTP protocol. It is a lightweight service that is widely available due to the popularity of HTTP protocol. Sign REST is lightweight, it has very good performance in a software system. It is also one of the foundations for creating highly scalable systems that provide a service to large number of clients. Another key feature of a REST service is that as long as the interface is kept same, we can change the underlying implementation. For example clients of REST service can keep calling the same service while we change the implementation from PHP to Java. What is serverless architecture? Serverless architecture is a term that refers to following an application that depends on a third-party service an application in which code is run on ephemeral containers in aws lambda is a popular service to implement serverless architecture another concept in serverless architecture is to treat code as a service or function as a service faas we just write code that can be run on any environment or server without the need of specifying which server should be used to run this code what are the main principles of DevOps? DevOps is different from technical operations. It has following main principles. Incremental, in DevOps we aim to incrementally release software to production. We do releases to production more often than waterfall approach of one large release. Automated, to enable use to make releases more often, we automate the operations from code check into deployment in production. Collaborative, DevOps is not only responsibility of operations team. It is a collaborative effort of Dev, QA, Release and DevOps teams. Iterative, DevOps is based on iterative principle of using a process that is repeatable. But with each iteration we aim to make the process more efficient and better. Self-service, in DevOps, we automate things and give self-service options to other teams so that they are empowered to deliver the work in their domain. How does Kubernetes provide high availability of applications in a cluster? In a Kubernetes cluster, there is a deployment controller. 
This controller monitors the instances created by Kubernetes in a cluster. Once a node or the machine hosting the node goes down, deployment controller will replace the node. It is a self-healing mechanism in Kubernetes to provide high availability of applications. Therefore, in Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes deployment controller is responsible for starting the instances as well as replacing the instances in case of a failure. What is a deployment pipeline? A deployment pipeline is an important concept in continuous delivery. In deployment pipeline we break the build process into distinct stages. In each stage we get the feedback to move on to the next stage. It is a collaborative effort between various groups involved in delivering software development. Often the first stage in deployment pipeline is compiling the code and converting into binaries. After that we run the automated tests. Depending on the scenario, there are stages like performance testing, security check, usability testing etc. in a deployment pipeline. In DevOps, our aim is to automate all the stages of deployment pipeline. With a smooth running deployment pipeline, we can achieve the goal of continuous delivery. What is self-testing code? Self-testing code is an important feature of DevOps culture. In DevOps culture, development team members are expected to write self-testing code. It means we have to write code along with the tests that can test this code. Once the test passes, we feel confident to release the code. If we get an issue in production, we first tried an automation test to validate that the issue happens in current release. Once the issue in release code is fixed, we run the same test to validate that the defect is not there. With each release we keep running these tests so that the issue does not appear anymore. One of the techniques of writing self-testing code is test-driven development, TDD. What are the common use cases of Docker? Some of the common use cases of Docker are as follows. Setting up development environment, we can use Docker to set the development environment with the applications on which our code is dependent. Testing automation setup, Docker can also help in creating the testing automation setup. We can set up different services and apps with Docker to create the automation testing environment. Production deployment, Docker also helps in implementing the production deployment for an application. We can use it to create the exact environment and process that will be used for doing the production deployment. How will you remove an image from Docker? We can use Docker or a command to delete an image from our local system. Exact command is percent Docker remove. If we want to find IDs of all the Docker images in our local system, we can use your Docker images command percent Docker images. If we want to remove a Docker container then we use Docker RM command. Percent Docker RM. What is a Docker container? A Docker container is a lightweight system that can be run on a Linux operating system or a virtual machine. It is a package of an application and related dependencies that can be run independently. Since Docker container is very lightweight, multiple containers can be run simultaneously on a single server or a virtual machine. With a Docker container we can create an isolated system with restricted services and processes. A container has private view of the operating system. It has its own process ID space, file system, and network interface. Multiple Docker containers can share same kernel. How many heads can you create in a Git repository? There can be any number of heads in a Git repository. By default there is one head known as head in each repository in Git. What are the security benefits of using container-based system? Some of the main security benefits of using a container-based system are as follows. Segregation. In a container-based system we segregate the applications on different containers. Each application may be running on same host but in a separate container. Each application has access to ports, files and other resources that are provided to it by the container. Transient, in a container-based system, each application is considered as a transient system. It is better than a static system that has fixed environment which can be exposed over time. Control, we use repeatable scripts to create the containers. 
This provides us tight control over the software application that we want to deploy and run. It also reduces the risk of unwanted changes in setup that can cause security loopholes. Security Patch In a container-based system, we can deploy security patches on multiple containers in a uniform way. Also it is easier to patch a container with an application update. What are the main features of Docker Hub? Docker Hub provides following main features. Image repositories. In Docker Hub we can push, pull, find and manage Docker images. It is a big library that has images from community, official as well as private sources. Automated builds. We can use Docker Hub to create new images by making changes to source code repository of the image. Webhooks. With webhooks in Docker Hub we can trigger actions that can create and build new images by pushing a change to repository. GitHub, Bitbucket integration, Docker Hub also provides integration with GitHub and Bitbucket systems. Can we lose our data when a Docker container exits? A Docker container has its own file system. In an application running on Docker container we can write to this file system. When the container exits, data written to file system still remains. When we restart the container, same data can be accessed again. Only when we delete the container, related data will be deleted. What is the scope for SSH? SSH is a secure shell which provides users with a secure, encrypted mechanism to log into systems and transfer files. To log out a remote machine and work on command line. To secure encrypted communications between two hosts over an insecure network. Subscribe to our channel, Interview Gig. Visit our website for more articles and interview questions and answers. www.interviewgig.com Like share and comment. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Click the bell button for latest updates.